Hello everyone, I'm Scott T. Peterson and I'm excited to bring you another Animator Spotlight. Today we feature one of Disney's premier animators, Randy Haycock. Randy has worked at Disney Feature Animation for the last 33 years on everything from Aladdin to their latest movies and shorts. Too many to mention here. However, some of my favorites that he's best known for is supervising and designing the villain Clayton for Disney's Tarzan. What an amazing show and character that was. He also supervised on Baby and Young Hercules for the movie of the same name. For Atlantis, he supervised on Princess Kida and brought a whole new dimension to that character than was previously imagined. On Princess and the Frog, he was the supervising animator on Prince Naveen, both as a human and as a frog. On Disney's latest Winnie the Pooh movie, he supervised the character Eeyore. And I just love that because I have a soft spot in my heart for the Winnie the Pooh characters since those were the first Disney characters that I got to work on. Swish is real good too. But make no mistake, whatever Randy works on comes to life with a combination of meaningful acting and gifted draftmanship. Oh, I was mad. Ma like, mad mad. I was like, Meh. I was like, I was really, really mad. But I'm, I'm just happy you found me now. Everyone has to start somewhere, so I asked him what was his earliest influences and what led him to decide to become an animator. So sit back and relax and enjoy getting to know a little bit about Randy Haycock. Well, I grew up in uh, a little town in Colorado called Grand Junction. Uh, I drew my whole life. Uh, before I went to school, I was drawing. I remember my sister brought home uh, what they called a mimeograph, which was kind of like a Xerox copy of a of a brontosaurus, and uh, I remember copying that. So my mom's great, she kept everything, so now I know that I really drew that when I was three years old. But I like to draw dinosaurs. In fact, I drew and illustrated my own dinosaur book. I wrote and illustrated my own dinosaur book uh, in the third grade. I got into drawing animals and I, and I drew a lot of animals. And my mom had a friend from church who uh, was uh, an amateur artist, but gave lessons, drawing lessons. And so uh, I took drawing lessons from this lady uh, for, for a couple of years. And she introduced me to a lot of artists that I'd never heard of. Uh, she introduced me to uh, kind of the different techniques of drawing uh, and abstract and different styles and different things like that. My mom would take my drawings into uh, this frame store in in town where uh, they would frame them up and the guy that ran the frame store was seeing my drawings and he said said something to my mom about one of my drawings and she said oh yeah my son did that and he said really how old is he, he said he's 11 and he's like wow that's really good uh, you ought to bring him in I'd like to meet him you know maybe I could give him drawing lessons and so she thought that was pretty cool. So she did. She brought me in and I sat down and got to meet with him one day and he offered to give me drawing lessons. And he was a professional artist, local artist. So for the next couple of years, I would go in Saturday mornings and take drawing lessons from him. My mom really supported uh, my drawing and my art. And uh, at the time I was taking lessons from him, I kind of had decided that I, I started to get into comic books and I decided that I wanted to be a comic book artist. And so I was drawing lots of superheroes and different things like that. But I had a great, also a great uh, teacher in junior high named Sal Salas. He was a muralist uh, in town and he would painted uh, kind of murals around town in this Aztec style. <clears throat> but he introduced us to all kinds of different mediums, oil paints and watercolors and sculpture and, and glass etching and you know, tattoos, everything. He, he, he just wanted to introduce us to every possible form of art. But he also taught me a lesson about humility and about working hard, too. Um, we had an assignment where we had to draw a picture from a photograph, and I picked this photo of a, of a polar bear. And I was a little cocky at the time because I was in a, it was junior high art elective class where most people took it for an easy A, but I took it because I liked art. And he would put everybody's artwork up on the wall during the class and then we'd talk about it. And I looked at my polar bear up there with all these others and I thought, yeah, my polar bear is way better than everybody else's. I'm going to get an A, you know, because it's so much better. And uh, I got a C on that polar bear. 
And I was really upset that I got a C. And so I talked to Mr. Salas after class and I said, how come you gave me a C? I mean, clearly my drawing's better than everybody else's. See, I was cocky. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, uh, well, because I'm not grading you based on what their ability is, I'm, I'm based, grading you based on your own ability. And I know you can do better than this. And this is C work for you. And that really taught me an important lesson about doing my best in everything I, I, do, I work on, you know, and really putting my best work out there. One of the most important things that, that Mr. Salas did for me was to encourage me to put a portfolio together to send to Marvel Comics because he knew I wanted to be a comic book artist. And so he helped me put together some drawings that I'd done and uh, I sent it off to Marvel Comics. And uh, I got a few weeks later a form letter back, kind of a form letter thing that basically said, um, we don't really have time to look at your work or to give you any recommendations, but uh, we'll, we're sure you'll, you're very talented and you'll do really well in whatever you decide to do. And I was really depressed. I thought they would tell me what schools to go to. I sent this letter asking them for feedback and to tell me what schools to go to to learn. So I decided to go see a movie. I lived in a small town that only had two movie theaters and one of the only movies that was playing was this animated film and it was this movie called Fantasia. And I came out of Fantasia and forgot all about comics. I knew I wanted to be an animator. After I saw that movie, in particular, a scene toward the end of the movie where this big devil comes out of the mountain and he's just dramatic and he's wings and he's so powerful and there's such emotion in him. And, and I thought, wow, you know, I want to do that. I want to make people feel the way that made me feel. You know, I got really excited about it. I say it's the one time in my life when I can say the devil made me do it and it didn't turn out terrible. So... <laughs> But that, that animation of that devil by an animator named Bill Teitla uh, just, really, just really had a powerful effect on me. And I knew from that moment I wanted to be an animator. My mom bought me a book on animation by an artist who had been a Disney animator back in the 40s named Preston Blair, who had worked on Fantasia, coincidentally. And in the back of that book, he showed you how to make a little light box, which I still have here. It's right behind right behind the camera here. <laughs> and that light box, uh, I, 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 I had that light box made for me. And, uh, and that was my first uh, attempts at animation where we're working on that light box. I was about 15 years old at the time. And uh, that, from that point on, I really knew that animation is what I wanted to do.